And history has already been rewritten this weekend with John Force going faster than any competitor, top fuel or funny car has ever gone in NHRA history. Despite a spectacular 323 miles an hour, Cruz Petragon has a lower ET and is in the number one qualifying position. But John could be formidable this weekend with his teammate Tony Petragon taking on rival Ron Caps in the first round. He could retain an important edge. And who would guess that Whit Bazemore, similar to his teammate in Top Fuel, would shell the 98 car and take the 97 on, disappointed so far in this season's results. Yes, they did. Here comes the captain of that Castro fleet. Not that guy. Dale Creasy Jr., three times he gets fourth in round one. Looks like before and after from an Earl Shive commercial out there. Watch this. John Forrest with the high beams on. 321.77 backs up that blistering mile-an-hour speed. The hat is coming off, and John, when it runs those kind of numbers, it's like breaking the sound barrier, John, when it runs those kind of numbers. Weird things happen in there. What happened? 321, you backed up to 323. We did. That's, man, I think, and I got to tell you, it's not just the corporate money behind this deal, but it's guys like Austin Coyle. And, you know, I've been lying all weekend saying it didn't really matter about speed, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of nice. So we're really proud of that. But Coyle, Bernie, and Madeline, and Tony, they get credit for that, and I really do mean that sincerely. Thank you. John Force has been on top for a while. Laura's got the story of a guy who's what looking to I save the track. Back. I think it's only about 1,000 feet. Great win for Team Winston. Here comes John Force against Corey Lee. That's the pioneer art of entertainment machine. Let's see if they can grab on from Force. Nope. Not when Force is running 488 at 321 miles an hour, and he backed up that speed record. That is one bad hot rod, sports fans. Let's he take a look at the championship round. He was the first guy to run a funny car over 300. Chuck Edsel the first guy to run one in the fours. That would be a historic meeting. Of course, John Force hopes that that doesn't take place. The Castro Ford, it's Chevrolet and Kendall on the far lane. Two primetime players. Edsel spoke. See ya, Chuck. John Force the win, 488, 319 miles an hour. That's one bad hot ride. Let's go to Dave Green. Well, I'll tell you, John Force is sure commanding a crowd down here. Great weekend, all weekend long, big numbers, but I'm sure the critical thing was making sure you got that lane choice in the semis. Well, that was critical. We really have to be careful. Uh, Paul Smith, really savvy on these racetracks, match racer like ourselves, and, and Epler's a good driver, so we'll see it happen. Should be a pretty good race. John Force, a tall challenge for Jim Epler. He's standing Look by with Steve Evans in semifinal yes, round. final time. Can he win for the first time in five years? If he does, he's got to beat that guy, John Ford. Nothing like the sight of a John Ford burnout on a crisp, clear spring day here in the Garden State. Here comes Jim Epler. Steve Evans, this ought to be a great final. It's the guy that's won it all against a very resurgent Jim Epler. Well, John Forrest smoked the tires in Dallas two weeks ago to lose to Ron Caps. He's not going to do that again. Jim Epler has not been in a final since the Bush administration. If anybody's going to smoke the tires, it's going to be Epler. This is where John Forrest gets his first win of the year at one of his favorite racetracks. Steve, let's of course realize Jim Epler has produced a couple of uh, career bests, both of the ET and top speed in the semifinal pairings, but he's also going up against Funny Car's career best driver, John Force, whose worst run of the day has been a 491. That would seemingly favor John Force, but Bob, I think you've seen it also. Great year to take that happen. Two weeks ago in Dallas, these guys went at it in round number two. Epler actually came in as a favorite mathematically, but he smoked the tires, was taken out by forces, 490 in that championship round. They don't want to beat themselves right here, and if they can make a good quarter mile run like we've seen in that last pass, in that 490 range, this could be some sprint for the championship here at e -Town. Lane Austin Coyle. The guys calling the shots sent their guys into battle.
with a spectacular run up his speed record 484 323.89 miles an hour and unless something sensational happens in the fuel dragster final the fuel funny car speed record is going to be higher than the dragsters for the first time in history John Forrest continues his streak. He has now won at least one race every year since 1987. Bettered only by Warren Johnson, who's won since 82. Great performance. Flawless. Vintage. Team Castrol. Ford. Austin Coyle. Bernie Federley. The Fishman. And the rest of that team. Look at that. Look at the speed. They finally see it. 323.89 miles an hour. 484, that car is unreal here this weekend. And the top fuel guys, well actually Joe Amato, with a chance to set the speed record in the fuel dragster category. Let's get down to the starting line. I'll bet you it is wild down there, David. Oh, it certainly is. Crowd is going nuts, team's going nuts, and I'm with the new merchant of speed, Austin. Where is all this coming from? Great day. Well, we've been really working hard on our motor. You know, Wes Fernie and Cruz Pedregon and some of the other guys, Ronnie Cabs, were pushing us really hard. We found a little horsepower, and it's uh, nice to have it. I guess so. Let's go down to the far end. Happy driver, Steve Evans. Happy driver, John. You just reset the speed record faster than the dragsters. Come in here in the Mopars and run with our Ford Mustang. I mean, it's exciting for Castro, but I tell you what, all these races are great, and all these brands are great, and we're excited. Uh, Model called me queen for a day, so maybe for a few more minutes. He ain't run yet, but I'm excited. That's the big, that's the big deal. Who's the queen now? Well, I ain't saying that. I might be the queen again here in a few minutes, but I'm excited. I just love all my sponsors, all pro Vista and all of you, Max. We've done a great job. Brand one, I love you guys. Big speed, big coil. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get off the racetrack. Top fields coming. Oh, man. It's been a long time coming at the start of the season. Forrest now in command. Look at that. He is five rounds up on Edsel. Pedagon slips to third after the last three races where he struggled. Captain Tim Wilkerson round out the top five. And the crowd goes wild. We have got the top fuel finalists coming up. That is one tough act to follow. We'll take a look at the last race of English Town when we come back. Go get them, boys. Joe Amato gets the win at 461. 319 miles an hour. Corey Mack right there at 466. 314. If you're scoring at home, five hundredths of a second, the margin of victory. And Joe Amato won't care that he's not the fastest car in the ballpark. He's the best top fueler. And for the first time in two years, Joe Amato puts back-to-back -back wins on the board. Early